Glory to God! Amen. Glory to God! Amen. Amen! God made us, God saved us, God called us for one reason, and that is for the glory of God. Amen. Remember that, LCC. You are made for His glory, you are redeemed for His glory, and you are called for His glory. Hallelujah. So today, I will uh, preach and teach our next uh, message, the principle of preaching an area. The principles of preaching an area. Hallelujah. I volunteered, supposed to be my lovely wife will uh, preach today. Hallelujah. But I volunteered because it is her birthday today. So as a gift, uh, I thought I can escape from giving her personal uh, practical, tangible gift because I took over her uh, time, her schedule, you know, to uh, preach, hallelujah, the gospel. Anyway, I enjoy preaching this message and studying this message because, you know, I am an evangelist, so uh, these are the messages that I love to study and, and preach, amen? So, principles of preaching an area, I will read uh, one, uh, two passages, in Matthew 9, 36, 38. But when he saw the multitudes, when Jesus saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them. See, we need compassion. We need to be compassionate people. If you are a disciple of Jesus, a follower of Jesus, you need to pray every day not to harden your heart, but to be compassionate. Jesus was moved with compassion for the people around him. Why? Because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then Jesus said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Let us pray. Father, thank you for teaching us for reminding us, for exhorting us, for equipping us, Lord, to be your witnesses. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for encouraging us, Lord, to see the harvest, to envision the harvest, to pray to the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the harvest, to show us the harvest and to prepare workers and laborers. Lord, thank you that LCC, you prepared a lot of workers Thank you, O Lord, that you have equipped us. You have raised up many pastors, ministers, and house church leaders, and many, many workers at LCC for the last 16 years. Lord, thank you that now we are ready, we are prepared to send out labor laborers into the field, into your harvest field, and reach out to those lost people, to the prodigals, Lord, to the downtrodden, to those who are struggling in their sin, and share Jesus to them so that you can set them free from the bandage of sin, so that you can save them and redeem them and forgive their sins and cleanse them from all of their sins and restore their broken relationship with you. Lord, use us as your ambassadors. Lord, use me today to teach and preach your word with power, with conviction, and yet with simplicity and clarity. Let your people understand the gospel. Let your people understand the principles on how to reach out to others, especially in our community, in our city, and in our own country. Father, we give you, I give you all the glory and the honor for the anointing. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Isaiah 52 verse 7, How beautiful upon the mountains are the pit of him who brings good News, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. I encourage you today, especially those who are in our church, in our studio, here at LCC Global, our main service here in Kuwait, look at your feet, and then look at your brother and sister besides, tell him, tell her, your shoes or your sandals, those who are at home, your sandals, hallelujah. <laughs> Every time that you wear those shoes, 
or your sandals, remember that you are called to witness. Okay. Repeat after me. Tell him to her, your shoes, whether they are new or old, whether they are Mia Mia or 100 KD, <laughs> why they are laughing? <laughs> you know Mia Mia? You know, Filipinos, 100 pills. What is 100 pills? Maybe 10 pesos? <laughs> you know? <laughs> tell him, tell her, it doesn't matter whether your shoes or sandals are expensive or they are cheap. The more important things, your feet are so beautiful. If you are bringing the good news of good tidings to the lost, right? Yeah. Hallelujah. Your feet are so beautiful if you are sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. I love this. That's why I love to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because I want God to see that my feet are beautiful. Tell your brother and sister in the Lord. Tell him, especially the women. You don't need manicure, you don't need pedicure if you are <laughs> a preacher of the gospel. Whether your feet are like John the Baptist's feet or Elijah's feet, your feet are beautiful in the sight of God if you are a proclaimer of the good news of Jesus Christ. Give Him glory, give Him honor, give Him praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Today I will teach you basic principles of evangelism. I love this. This is my calling. This is my giftings. This is my life. For me, this is a way of life. I will teach you today, Hallelujah, a crash course of evangelism and discipleship. I will teach you the why, the what, Hallelujah, the who, the where, and the how of evangelism. So that you will be equipped so that you learn how to share your faith and the love of Jesus Christ to others. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's start. Let's begin. Let us divide the word. Why do we need to go out and reach out? That's my topic last week. Uh, that, that's the message that God gave to me as I read and meditate and study this series. Hallelujah. What are the reasons? I gave you four reasons last week. Let us... Uh, in passing and review, number one, because God is a missional God. Hallelujah. Our God is a missional God. He is a sending God. Do you know, LCC, what time is now? Uh, do you know, when I say what time is now, what season are we are? What season we are in right now? What is the season of our church? Where are we at right now? What, what is the time, LCC? Do you know that we are in the sending part of our mission statement, our strategy? It's very obvious in Kuwait, there will be a great exodus of people. Hallelujah, because it is not getting better. Thank God at this moment, uh, Kuwait is happy. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, the Middle East is happy. Why? Because the oil is jacked up. Correct? See, the, the Asian nations, they are struggling. The African nations, they are struggling. The European nations, they are struggling. But Middle East, are, they are happy because they all jack up. See, uh, the money exchange jack up. See, the, 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 the Filipino, you know, are, are happy in Kuwait, 181, 1 KD, 181 peso or more, 184 or more. But it is sad, you know. It is sad there is a, a great inflation and deflation right in our nation, in our country, in South Africa, in the Philippines. This is a sad news. So this is a sign, you know, of the last days of famine, of pestilence, of financial crisis, of problem all over the world. Very obvious. Hallelujah. And there, there is a great exodus in Kuwait. Thank God that LCC is focused in kingdom building, focus in building our people, in equipping our people, in raising Christian spiritual multipliers. For the last six years, we are training, we are equipping, we are discipling, we are teaching. And LCC is ready. See, God is sending not only ordinary people, He is sending 
pastors, ministers, you know, uh, house church leaders, workers that we trained for many years. Hallelujah. But I'm excited. I'm excited. Some pastors, they will be scared if there is a great exodus. You know, there is a great exodus of people in Kuwait. And I think also all over the world, people come through and pro all over the globe. Why? Because they are looking for a better job. But LCC leaders, workers, pastors, ministers, they knew that they are called. They knew that this is the diaspora of God. The sending of God. God is sending His people all over the nation. Why? Because He loves the nation of the world. He loves to save the nation of the world. He doesn't want anyone to perish. These are all the reasons why do we need to go out and reach out. Because God is a missional God. Because we want to obey the command of Christ. Isn't it? That our team is abide and obey. And this is action time. This is, this is the time that we need to obey. So that our loved ones will not perish. Right? Our family, our friends, and our peers. And because we love Jesus. If you love Jesus, you don't just contain and be selfish and keep the love of Jesus with you. That's why you invite your brothers. You, you share your brothers. Thank you, brother, for coming here today. And those who came from the first time. Hallelujah. Because we love our loved ones, our peers and our friends. So, therefore, we don't want them to perish. That's why we share the gospel to them. Hallelujah. Okay, next, the what? The what of evangelism. The what of reaching out. Why we need to go out and reach out? Why do we need to go out and reach out? Hallelujah. So, the second reason, what kind of message are we going to share? The second principle I should say, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? This is what we share. We, we don't share our own theology. We don't share our own Experiences, even though we testify about our experiences with the Lord, but our main focus and our main message is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. If I will ask you today, pastor, minister, house church leader, what is the gospel? Can you present the gospel in a simple way that even a child can understand? Because Jesus Christ said, the kingdom belongs to you, these little children. See, I hide this from the wise and the strong you know, the Pharisees and the Sadducees of the day, the scholars of the day, the wise of the day. But I have given this, the kingdom, to you, to the little children. Can you quote the gospel in one minute, in three minutes, in five minutes? Can you present it clearly, effectively, to the people around you? See, evangelism is not inviting people. I want to repeat that. Evangelism is not inviting people. That's wrong. The church mess up evangelism. Biblical evangelism is not inviting people come to our church. My friends, I'm not inviting them. And I have a lot of friends. Most of them are sinners. I don't even invite them, but they are coming to the church. Why? Because I present the gospel. What is the gospel of Jesus Christ? Do you know it by heart? Do you know it by memory? Do you know it when somebody asks you instantly? Can you present it clearly? What is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? That's the problem. Because we ourselves, we don't know the gospel. That's why we don't present the gospel clearly and effectively. Now it's wake up time. We need to go back to the basic. That's why God led us into this. Open your Bible with me in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I can quote this to you, but I want to read it, and I want you to meditate it, and I want you to memorize it. This is the Apostle Paul explaining the gospel. He said, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel, which I preach to you, which also you receive, and which you stand. By which also you are saved if you all pass the word which I preach to you unless you believe in vain. For I delivered to you first of all which I also received that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture and that he was seen by Cephas then by the twelve. 
After that, he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present, but some have fallen asleep. After that, he was seen by James, then by all the apostles. Then last of all, he was seen by me also, by one born out of due time. Why? Paul says, For I am the least of the apostles, who am not worthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. Verse 10, But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace toward me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. See, this is the gospel. That Jesus suffered, Jesus crucified, Jesus died, Jesus rose again from the dead, ascended to heaven, sat down at the right hand of the Father, and is coming again to judge the living and the dead. That's the gospel. Christ crucified. Christ who came in the flesh. Christ who died, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, the resurrected power of the Holy Spirit, raised Him from the dead and showed Himself to the 500 and then the 11 and then Thomas and then the Apostle Paul. Hallelujah. And Jesus is still showing Himself to those whom he called. Hallelujah. Anoint them with the Holy Spirit. Reveal himself to them. And then ask them to preach the gospel. Or be his witnesses. That's the gospel. It was called the glorious gospel. It was called the eternal gospel. Or the everlasting gospel. It was called the gospel of grace. The glorious gospel. The everlasting gospel, hallelujah, or the good news of our salvation. This is the gospel that we are preaching, the gospel of grace, Acts 20, 24. But none of these things move me, says the Apostle Paul. All the persecution, all the attack to the church during the time of the Apostle Paul. All the troubles and the trials and the problem that he experienced. Why? Because he is focused on the gospel. He said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God, the power to save, the power to save those who believe, the Jupers, and then, and then the Gentiles. He said, but none of these things move me, all the troubles that he experienced, nor do I count my life dear to myself. Paul says, I die to myself already, so that I may finish my race with joy. Paul is focused to his goal to finish the race. Hallelujah. And the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus, see, he personally received his calling from the Lord. God placed him into the ministry even though he is not worthy. Just like me, I am not worthy. Just like all of us. But this is a great privilege that God placed us into the ministry that we receive from the Lord. He said to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. That's the gospel. See, we are not legalistic. See, this is the problem of many pastors when they grow in the Lord and they grow in the, in the Lord for a long, long time, five years, ten years, because they keep on reading the Word and they don't ebb now. You know, they don't ebb now. The, the tangible, practical, hallelujah, uh, activities, you know, to the sinners, to the ordinary people around them because they became churchy. Only now ministering and going around the church and talking to the church people and they learn a lot of Christian jargon. Now they don't have, you know, the, the sensitivity of the needs of the people around them, the sinners who are still struggling with their sins and continuously struggling with their sins. You know, the sheep without shepherd, the sheep who are bruised, you know, the, the, the sheep who are struggling, the, the sheep who have problem every day. Now they don't have the touch anymore with the reality of life, the practicality of life. They became religious. That's the problem. They became office boy. They, they, they became like CEO, just giving orders. No, 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 no. If you are following Jesus, Jesus called the prince of sinners and even accused a gluten and even accused a friend of prostitutes and tax collectors. We still need to reach out to them, build relationship with them, and then love them genuinely. That's my style of evangelism, friendship evangelism. 
My friends knew that I love them. Even they don't go to church. But I'm telling them, I am a servant of the Lord. You cannot stop me praying for you that someday you will encounter Jesus. And someday you will understand what I am talking to you. What I am giving to you. Someday. A great testimony, my dear sister Leir, last Friday. I'm so happy. You know, praying for one friend. One friend. He is, my, he is a basketball player, a good basketball player. He's part of our team long time ago. Now also he is a cyclist. He is a famous cyclist in Kuwait. Competing with the Kuwaitis, competing in Dubai, competing everywhere. Like uh, Pastor Reggie, Coach Reggie, triathlete, no? Before, competing. No, I'm praying for him. I'm not inviting him in the church. Why do I need to invite him? He don't know Jesus. I want him to know Jesus. And he is the one who will go to the church to join me worshiping Jesus. I want him to join an Alpha. I want him to join, you know, a connection group before he will go to church. Because it's easy to invite people to go to church if they are already a believer. If they know, hallelujah, Jesus, and, and they know the Christian culture. I, I heard now that he is willing to hear the gospel. Open an Alpha course in his house. And also her family are coming in Kuwait. And join the family. Sterla Ray said, I almost cry when you testify about that. You know what I love? He said, LCC. He said, glory to God. They are not forcing us. Sir Alan, Coach Nelson, you guys, you just keep on sharing, praying, loving. Every time that I meet him, I'm praying for me and blessing my family. Now he said, the seed is ready. I am ready. My family are ready. That's real evangelism. You bring the church to the people. You bring the gospel to the people. You introduce Jesus and let them come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And the Lord is the one who will open their doors and they will join us. Hallelujah. That's the gospel. That's the presentation of the gospel. That's how we grow. That's why we open all of these house churches because we want the people in the community to have a community, a spiritual family in that community. Hallelujah. We are preaching the gospel. We don't preach LCC. We preach the gospel. Are you with me? That's the gospel of grace. The glorious gospel. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 11 to 14. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Can we read this all together? Those who are in our studio. One, two, three. According of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Although I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, an insolent man, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. Courage your brother and sister in the Lord besides you. Come on, tell him, tell her, the grace of God is abundant in your life. The grace of God is abundant in your life. Hallelujah. That's the key. The grace of God. For by grace are you saved through faith and that's not of yourself. It is the gift of God so that no one should boast. No one should boast so that the glory belongs to God. Hallelujah. It is only by the grace of God. It is only by the grace of God. It is only by the grace of God that we are saved, that we are able to minister to others. It is only by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Number three, the when. When are we going to reach out? The time is now. It's green. God gave us the green light. 2 Corinthians 6, 2, For he says, In an acceptable time, I have heard you. And in the day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. In our scripture reading, you know, Jesus know when is the time to send, when is the time to train, when is the time to listen, when is the time to wait. But now it's sending time. See, he sent the 12 short mission, go only to the Jew in uh, chapter 9 of Matthew. And then in Luke 10, he sent the 70 uh, to go to the villages, to go to the Gentiles. 
Hallelujah. Go to the man and woman of peace. See, he sent the disciples who became apostles in Acts of the Apostle. See, the Acts of the Apostle is a book of sending out. It's a book of mission. You know, the church was born and they became missionaries all over the globe in the Roman known world during that time. Hallelujah. The time is now. Not tomorrow. Not next week. Not next month. Not when you go to Canada. When you go back to the USA. Go back to the Philippines. Go back to India. Now is the time. Because we are in the last days. The, click, the time is clicking. The clock is clicking. Tick-tock, 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 tick-tock. Not the tick-tock in, you know, the Facebook. <laughs> Hallelujah. Time is running. You know? Why did I talk about TikTok? Because there, are some, because there are some people, I get annoyed with some people. They just do TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. I get annoyed with that. <laughs> Luke 12, 19, 20. That's why I'm not doing TikTok. I'm preaching the gospel. I'm witnessing. I don't want to waste my time with TikTok and giving China the privilege and the platform to spy. No way. I can say that because I have Chinese blood. And I'm loyal to the Philippines and loyal to Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Luke 12, 19, 20. <laughs> and I will say to my soul, this is a rich man, accumulating all stuff and things, working, 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 saving, 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 building, 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 building. And then he said, braggingly, now it's time to retire. I have my retirement, you know, in abundance. I will say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, relax, eat, drink, and rejoice, be merry. But the preposition, but, but, God said to him, fool, mokmako, bopol, this night your soul will be required of you. Whew. There is a judgment day. There is a time of reckoning. There is a time of accountability. This night your soul will be required of you. Then those, then who's, will those things be with you have provided? Okay, you accumulate all things, the things of this world, if you lose your soul. What is the benefit of that? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Now it's the time. Number four, where are we going to reach out? Where are we going to reach out? The where of evangelism. Acts 1.8 But when the Holy Spirit shall come, you shall receive power. And you shall be my witnesses. Where? In Jerusalem. Your own Jerusalem. Your family, your friends around you, your community, your plot, your accommodation, your village, your Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Basically, your world. Isn't it that we have a world? You have your own world. I have my own world. As you go to your world, sa sarili mong mundo, tama, meron ka sariling mundo, as you go to your own world, hallelujah, you share the gospel, you witness, you make disciples who will make others also. Hallelujah. We keep on making disciples so that others will make disciples. We keep on evangelizing so that others will also evangelize. We keep on sharing. We keep on reaching out so that others also will have the opportunity to hear the gospel. Not all will believe. Not all will receive. But I assured you, there are many who will believe and receive that God has prepared for you. He prepared them for you. You are the one who will reach out to them. Not me, not him, not her. You. You. Hallelujah. Do you know according to survey to, to people who are wise and doing survey, survey, survey scholar, in your lifetime, you can meet or touch at least 10,000 people. 10,000 people at your lifetime. How many of those 10,000 people hear the gospel? Not saved, hear the gospel. Of course, we want them to get saved. Most of them but how many opportunities that you wasted in your lifetime? How many? I'm accountable to God. You're accountable to God. We are all accountable to God to the opportunities that He has given us. 
were, the were of evangelism. Hallelujah. Now, let's talk about the how. How are we going to reach out? And this is very practical. Hallelujah. Oh, we have a good materials that I gave to you guys, our pastors, preachers, and teachers. See, we extract this from our BI, Bible Institute. And these are good materials, very practical materials. If you want to know and learn more and be equipped, you know, learn from this. Hallelujah. So, let us mobilize a concentrated, concentrated prayer. Means a group prayer. Prayer caravan, praying, prayer, you know, to praying together, praying in groups. Hallelujah. Walking in the street, biking, just like what we are doing, jogging. Hallelujah. Or as you go to your word, go to your community, keep on praying, keep on praying, keep on praying. Acts chapter 2, 1 to 4, we know the story. Hallelujah. When the, day, when the days of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. What they are doing? They are commanded by the Lord to tarry in the city of Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit, to pray and pass, right? And suddenly as they pray and as they pass and as they waited, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rising, ra rushing mighty wind and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and one sat upon of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. We need to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to empower us or baptize us, those who are not yet baptized, or keep on filling us. Keep on filling us every day. We cannot do this in the place. People are hard-headed. I'm telling you. No, we can't. We need the Holy Spirit. Look at your brother and sister in the Lord. Bro, sis, you cannot do this alone. Tell him. No, 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 you cannot do this alone. You need the Holy Spirit. I need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who is convicting people, preparing people. Hallelujah. So that you will have an harvest. You will have a harvest. Hallelujah. Acts 13, 1 to 3. This is the Antioch Church. This is where God raised up Paul and Barnabas and all the leaders around him. Paul and Silas and all the leaders around him. Paul and Timothy and all the leaders around him. Uh, this is the missional church. This is the missionary church. This is the story of the apostle Paul and his team going to different parts of the world, different parts of nations, stay there for one year, stay there for two years, or stay there for a few months, and plant a new church, minister to the people, preach the gospel, witness, reach out, train, equip leaders. And then at the end of the life of the Apostle Paul, he was able to plant many churches and raise up many leaders. You can read that, you know, in Romans chapter 16, the summary of the ministry of the Apostle Paul. How successful and fruitful is this man who is a former persecutor of the church? And this is the beginning, you know, of his missional or missionary journey. Acts 13, 1 to 3. Now in the church that was in Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaen, who had been brought up with Herod and the Tatyarchs and Zol, and as they ministered to the Lord and fasted. As they ministered to the Lord, means they are calling and praying to the Lord. And they are fasting also. The Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul. For the work to which I have called them, then Abing fasted and prayed and laid hands on them. They sent them away. See, when we were in the Philippines, we, you know, dedicated leaders, regional leaders, because we are serious in reaching our nation, Filipinos, in the Philippines, we are serious. See, we spend two months in the Philippines going around Luzon, you know, uh, Mindanao, and the capital city, national region, except Visayas that time. But now we send our regional overseers that we appointed. We pray for, for you guys. Thank you, Pastor Willie, Pastor Albin, you know, Pastor Edwin, and Romel, and Joy, and Pastor Francis, our national director. We, are, we, we prayed for you. We are praying for you. Before we went to the Philippines, we are praying regularly for almost one year and, and, one year and a half. You know? and, and thank you for taking the responsibility, accepting the calling of the Lord, the challenge to reach out the whole Philippines. That's why we divide Philippines into five regions, just like in Kuwait. 
No, we, we appointed our leaders in Kuwait. The central region, this is the central region, where is the main service? You know? And then we have the east, we have the west, we have the north, we have the south. And thank you for these leaders who rise up to the occasion. You know, and now we send them. You know, Pastor Francis just went to Mindanao. Now, uh, Pastor Willie is in Sambuanga. Pastor Jade is in your uh, community, right? Kaoran, Kaoran, Maguindanao. And they are doing Encounter God Retreat and uh, training disciples and leaders and pastors. Weeping. See, LCC is a missional church, equipping church, sending missionary church. Hallelujah. Because we believe that we are in the last days and therefore we are preparing for the great harvest of souls and, and also the famine that is coming to the world. If our people are prepared, they are rooted in the world, they are strong in their faith. Whatever troubles that Satan will throw or this world will throw upon us, we will remain strong in the Lord. This is the reason why we are so serious in equipping you guys. So keep on praying for the Philippines. That the gospel will be spread all over our nation so that we will have a revival, spiritual revival. So the Holy Spirit is the one who set them apart, just like you guys. We ordained you last week. Don't forget that. Carlo and Shaila and Shalu and Jojo, you're going to Malta, you're going to Mabola, you know, <laughs> going to the United Kingdom. So I know you're still going back to Mabola. <laughs> you know, don't forget your calling. Don't forget that the Holy Spirit set you apart. Hallelujah. You have a mission in Mabola, an important mission, all right? <laughs> Acts 13, 1 to 5. You know, the last uh, passages, 4 and 5. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit. Say it with me. Being sent out, being sent out. by the Holy Spirit. Do you know that all of you are sent out by the Holy Spirit to come here in Kuwait? Hallelujah. That's why we have many missionaries in Kuwait. Hallelujah. That's why we are enjoying this fruitfulness and growth because God sent us all here in Kuwait. Oh, tell your brother and sister, now I realize that I am sent out. <laughs> Only now. <laughs> so being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus, and when they arrived in Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. They also had John as their assistant. I encourage you, especially those who are in Kuwait, start praying, Lord, where is my next assignment? Don't just apply because they are offering you good salary. You will not be blessed even you are blessed financially, you will still feel empty and void if you run like Jonah, if you run away with, with the calling of God. You need to ask, Lord, where is my next assignment? Are you sending me here and there? Or it is only me because I want cash? That's the problem. You need to be sure that God is really sending you into that nation. And He will prosper you. Whatever challenges you will face, He will provide for you. He will protect you. He will honor you and favor you. But if you go without Him, you will be like Jonah. Wait for Butanding. You know Butanding? The whale shark, the blue shark living in my, uh, uh, our place, my wife's place in Bicol. Wait for Butanding. Butanding is waiting for you. The blue shark. To shallow you and bring you back means you will not be successful you will not be happy in that place or that country that location if you do it alone if you run away from God he will keep on calling you to return to return so better pray now and as you pray as you wait be faithful here right now be faithful be fruitful here and be faithful hallelujah prayer is important it's necessary Hallelujah. The necessity of prayer. Uh, the power of prayer. LCC is prayerful. So I will not dwell in this. You know, we have prayer every week. We have prayer once a month. And our prayer team, you know, we have everyday prayer, intercessional prayer. Our staff are very prayerful. Uh, we have overnight prayer. We have personal prayer. We have a lot of groups prayer. You know, I cannot emphasize more about prayer and many examples in the Bible about prayer. Now let me talk about sowing and reaping. You want a great harvest, keep on planting and plant more seeds. That's the principle, right? The principle of sowing and reaping. 
There is one who scatters yet increases more, and there is one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. See, the Bibles are many passages from the book of Proverbs, the book of Psalms, and even the New Testament, and even in the Old Testament, in, the, in Genesis, God established this principle of seed time and harvest. If you plant, expect that you will reap. What you sow is you reap. So keep on sowing love, keep on sowing grace, keep on sowing the seed of faith, the gospel of Jesus Christ, so that later on you will harvest. And rejoice when I say you harvest, not necessary. You are the one who will get your harvest. Maybe others will get your harvest. Don't be sad, but rejoice. Maybe you shared the gospel, but other church or other congregation, you know, will reap them and they will join them and become workers. Hallelujah! See, we are not building LCC kingdom. We are building Christ's kingdom. We want people to get saved and grow and be discipled. And God is the one who will reward you. God is the one who will reward us. Are you with me here, brethren? Hallelujah. Example of sowing, of course, Jesus is our great example. He's our great model. We imitate him. See, he's ministering to the multitudes. You can see in the life of Jesus in the gospel. But most of the time, he is ministering to his disciples and even individual people, personal, the woman at the well, you know, uh, Zacchaeus, Nicodemus, and a lot of individual that Jesus ministered to. Hallelujah. I will not uh, elaborate that. Jesus is our great example. And of course, the disciples, the apostles, uh, you know, in the Acts of the Apostles, you can read that. That's your assignment. Hallelujah. Acts 2.41, Peter preached to the 3,000, more than 5,000 got saved, uh, and then preached again. The Apostle Paul and these disciples also, they make disciples. And then the filtering stage or the filtering principle. We need to filter. means we need to be selective. We need to identify and we need to discern the spiritual growth of our members in our small group, in our alpha group, or in our house churches. And those who are potential, spend more time, extra time. Meet them, encourage them, pray with them, uh, and then start discipling them, and then train them by our IDT, Intentional Discipleship Training or Leadership Training. And for our pastors and leaders and ministers, continue to, our, to your Christian education. Keep on growing in the Word and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't quit the BI because we want to legalize our pastors at the end of the Bible Institute, you will receive you know, a diploma, not a certificate anymore. Because now we are established, right? And we have Dr. John, a Bible scholar, who is teaching us and equipping us, Dr. John. So we will legalize you. At the end of your BI, Bible Institute, you know, uh, training is equivalent to four years. You don't realize that. You see, the IDT is two years, it's credited, and then another two years for BI, and then at the end, you will receive a diploma, you know, a biblical studies diploma or theology, the, the, theological studies diploma. And then a pastoral ministry diploma at the end of your training. So don't quit. Don't quit on God. Keep on growing and keep on learning because you need those documents when you apply a legal, you know, uh, entity in your nation. In the Philippines, it's needed. In UK, it's needed. In the US, it's needed. So that's why our church is providing. Hallelujah. Give God the glory. LCC is an, an equipping church. We equip our people. So filter those who are potential, those who have calling. And then last but not the least, building multiplying disciples or multiplying believers. Hallelujah. You need to make disciples. Because evangelism is only touching this generation. Making disciples is touching and equipping and training and preparing, you know, and transforming the next generation. The second, third, fourth generation. If we will only evangelize, it will cease, it will stop. Like many churches, I was saddened. We have friends. They are already ministering in the U.S. 2017 when we visited USA. They have more than 1,000 members. And now I have heard they were dissolved during pandemic. What happened? I said, what happened? I'm shocked. Because they just keep on watching online. Even though we have online, you know, we don't stop meeting physically. Here in Kuwait, we meet physically, regularly. There is, no, there is no alternative in personal 
meeting or fellowship. Man to man, woman to woman, fellowship. Satan attacked the church. See, this COVID, he used it to isolate us from each other. That's why in Kuwait, we are fighting for this at LCC that we need to meet. That's why these home churches, hallelujah, are blessing, great blessing. So that when we are not allowed to gather in a big groups like this, at least we can gather in our home with our family with our friends. Hallelujah. Are you with me why God led us to house churches? See, this is wisdom from the Lord. This is the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. That's why we keep on growing. Hallelujah. For our conclusion, go to the last, please. Conclusion. The time of living just for us should be over. It's time to move. It's time to take action. It's time to reach out. It's time to share the gospel. It's time to, wit to witness one soul at a time. One soul at a time. One family at a time. To those who don't know us, to those who just listen. We are not a G12 church, okay? We are not a G12 church. We are a family culture church. We love the family and we love to disciple the family. We are a discipleship church and a family church. We are not a G12 church. Our discipleship is not the, Jesus, is not the G12 model. It's the Jesus model. And our slogan is, be one, make one. Be a disciple first and make disciples. One person at a time. Reach one, be one, and reach one. Be one and make one. Say it with me. Be one and reach one. Be one and make one. I want to clarify this. Hallelujah. Because there are many people who are asking us if we are a G12 church. No, we are not. That's not our model. Our model is Jesus Christ's model. Discipleship model and loving the family, reaching to the family and building the family. Let us stand and let us pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the principles, O oh Lord God, on how to reach out to others. Thank you for equipping us. Thank you for training us. Thank you for challenging us. And thank you for sending us. Lord, empower your people with the Holy Spirit. Let the word that they have heard today will sink in into their hearts so that, Lord, it will blossom, it will germinate, it will blossom, it will grow, it will produce fruits, 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold. Return to your kingdom for your glory will produce, O oh Lord God, the fruit of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We will be changed from glory to glory. We will be changed and conformed and transformed to the image of Jesus Christ. And we will become more obedient to the Great Commission to go and make disciples of all nations. To go and be your witnesses as we receive the Holy Spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Lord, use us. Lord, use us. Send us to be your witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. In the name of Jesus. May I call on our youth, the East youth, come on. Rooftops, I love this song. You know, I will shout out the gospel to the rooftops. I will shout out the name of Jesus to the streets of Kuwait, to the community in Kuwait, to my workplace, and all over the globe. Hallelujah. Let us sing this song. And then I will, or let me give you now the benediction as they prepared Receive God's benediction. Oh, may the love of the Father, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and may the presence, empowerment of the Holy Spirit that will empower us to go and make disciples of all nations, to be Christ's witnesses. Be with us now and forever in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Give God the glory, saints. Give God the glory.
Thank you.